What you just saw is probably about the rawest, most honest wheeling test you could see a Bronco do. What's up, Light Bright Nation? What's going on, Light Bright Nation? So I don't know about you guys, but I think it's about damn time that someone finally showed what the new Ford Bronco is actually capable of. So we know there's a lot of videos already out there on the internet showing the Ford Bronco being tested out on the trails. But with that being said, most of those videos, the person driving the vehicle doesn't really have a lot of off-road driving experience. They're not exactly well-versed in what it takes to really perform out on the rocks. So Kevin and I decided that we wanted to know what the new Ford Bronco was fully capable of when you take the human error element out of the equation. And the closest that we could come to total perfection and godlyhood was Lauren Healy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him I was gonna say that. No, I didn't know that was coming. <laughs> some, some honestly say that he may even be a better driver than I am. I don't know, I don't know who started those rumors, but he's, pre he's pretty good. No, well, okay. I, I definitely appreciate that. I, I don't know about putting me up in the garden, <laughs> area, but, but but I mean, I've been doing this my whole life. Um, I, it's my passion. It's what I love to do. And so excited to be in a new Bronco on the Rubicon. I mean, the, the engineers got to bring them out here. Those were very stock Broncos on 33 inch tires. We've done a little bit of modifications to this one, but clearly so stoked to be out here. Like it's he's, awesome. He's being well, it's modest, but not modest. He really is. Uh, he's a professional. He's one of the top drivers in ultra four racing. He's one king of the hammers. He knows what he's doing, which makes him the perfect person to put behind the wheel of this Bronco, other than the fact that it's his and he owns it. Like we put him behind the wheel. <laughs> yep. Right on. Well, no, I mean, I'm stoked. I'm glad you guys came along with us and uh, it's going to be an epic adventure on the Rubicon. Dude, the Ford Bronco on the iconic Rubicon trail. Let's do it. All right, guys, now before we hit the trail, we've got to go over the Bronco with Lauren because he came rolling down the road and the first thing I noticed was there was quite a few aftermarket parts already on this thing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's been coming for a little while. Von Gittin Jr. and I have partnered to build the Fun Haver off-road program. And that's our race trucks and that's development of parts for, for the new Bronco. So, you know, I've been doing this my whole life, you know, 15 years of off-road and for my passion, what I love to do and, and knew pretty much, you know, the direction we wanted to head to be able to come do the trails at Rubicon to go to do Moab do all that stuff and that's that's uh this is the start of it there will be three different phases of packages this is the first one okay this is phase one what you have right now and this is all prototype stuff yes absolutely I mean always want to clarify that we're we're here to test this stuff so if we break something on the trail it's it, it is what it is that's but, the whole point of testing right. I don't anticipate anything breaking by any means but I mean we are we're here to test it we'll fine-tune some stuff a little bit you know and then go into production with all these parts here very soon so we have a Jeep Everybody knows we have a Jeep. One of the first things you do when you get your Jeep to make it your own is lift wheels and tires, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the first thing that, that I always want to do is get a little bit bigger tire. I want to put, put a set of Nitto Trail Grapplers <laughs> and some center line wheels on there. So um, to accomplish that, we needed approximately two to three inches of lift. We teamed up with Fox to develop a coilover to give us that amount of lift, okay. as well as we had to build an upper A-arm. So this will be a fun haver product. It's an upper A-arm to correct geometry and you know add a little bit of droop. So once you add that coilover for two inches of lift, yep. there's a geometry issue. 
you. Yep. And, and so this takes care of that issue. You just max out the, the ball joint at the at the top of the knuckle. Okay. And so you just got to take care of that and, and make sure you're not going to hurt anything. So this fixes okay. the geometry. Get your caster camber, everything where you want to put it. So this is two inches of lift, though? Two, two and a half inches. Yep. And then you told me earlier that it gave you like an extra inch of droop or so it did yep you know we build that into the shock because part of the problem you go bigger tire then you're stuffing the tire up into the wheel well further so it's preventing us from stuffing all the way up like a like the stock shocks would do as well as providing a little bit more droop this is a 17 um, nine inch wide wheel with a uh, five inch backspace on it and 37 and 37 now i do notice you took off the crash bars front and rear which they're just little add-ons which i've seen already yep. other people doing yep so. just done bolts out of there that you can see that actually the bolts still still are inside of there you just unbolt the crash bar out of there and it gives you gives you room for for all your turning and tolerances okay. so that's clearance. So that's pretty simple. That's a lift, wheels and tires, that's coilovers. Direct bolt on stuff. Right. So but this you do is... have to correct the upper A-arm. If you're going to off-road it, if you're going to go cruise around at the mall, it's fine. But, you know, if you're going to be using the max suspension travel, all the articulation, you you definitely need to uh, to correct that. And then the rear coilovers are just direct bolt on. And you can see underneath there, we uh, we put some cool skid plates underneath there to for the rocks hitting the front of the coilovers to so, protect those. So that was one thing that he brought up too. So the shocks sit in front of the rear axle. And what can happen is you come over a rock with your front tire and it can smash the bottom of the shock on the rear so there's actually these really cool skid plates that they have already made which i'd recommend right away if you're going to go off-road at all it doesn't matter stock not stock you need these rear shock skid plates yep um they're absolutely necessary and then uh rock sliders these are frame mounted welded on bolted on what are they these are frame mounted um we did weld them on they will be bolt on um bolt on is always tough when you're going into the frame with oem frames if you're drilling a frame i prefer to weld them on the factory ones are actually body mounted and they've been really tough. I mean, they've ran through, you know, the engineers ran through the Rubicon. We've done a bunch of testing at JV, but I want to be able to stick the vehicle onto a big boulder, pivot it, put all the weight onto the vehicle. And to me, I've always just welded it onto the frame. So it's it's all personal preference on, on what you want to do. Now, after the lift, wheels, tires, and sliders, which, like I said, are a must, generally you want a winch because if you're going out alone or even with friends, you know, if you're like me, you get yourself into some pretty silly situations because you like having fun. You need a way to get yourself out. Now, it's kind of an elephant in the room. It's sticking right up front here. It's right in front of the grill, and it's sitting on one of their actually custom front bumpers. But let's talk about the winch for a minute and the way you have to mount it you don't really have room to sink it into the grill or go down low you need it high up out of the way right if you look at the way it's done on a jeep like the bumper it sits between the frame rails there and the bumper sticks out further me race cars i'm always looking for approach and departure angle um that was the one of the things that i didn't necessarily want the winch and the bumper sticking out far i was trying to keep it tight as i could to the grill and then make the winch optional so you can see everything bolts on here i want to make that modular um like we said prototype stuff will probably adjust a little bit we can also put a little bit smaller tighter winch on here the technology package on the bronco that's the kind of the other give and take this camera view is blocked with xeon but actually the smaller tighter like the 9.0 like just a standard worn winch that has a box underneath it you can actually still see through the front camera so i was really excited about it you can see the winch in the view but this one actually blocks it so i think we'll go go to a little bit different winch on here the camera views on the mirrors though you can still use the outside tire so it doesn't completely take away your camera views and that's that's a question that i've got asked a lot on on being able to keep the technology package working the way it was designed what about airflow because uh, it's the first thing you see you're like well there goes the airflow to the grill but not necessarily no i mean i drove it a couple hundred miles yesterday you know coming up to coming up the mountain running up all the passes it still drove amazing i didn't see any kind of temperature increases it was like 95 outside running up the mountain passes like i haven't noticed it yet i'm not saying that it doesn't block some airflow but definitely haven't seen it yet so the bumper you can clearly see you guys came up and over so you have all the approach angle to the tire right so you have nothing in your way of getting this tire to a rock and then your front diff needs to be protected so you your skid comes all the way down underneath your steering your intercooler all that stuff is right there and very vulnerable so it's, it's really important to have a good strong skid plate under there and this one wraps all the way around down under the bottom so you know you're protecting your differential everything back underneath there the last thing that's up here up front is the fun ever light bar um we love project x they're launching a new light brand these are the ff 70s that we run on our race trucks we run them on the fun runner like they're an amazing light and they'll have a whole bunch more products coming soon you know the cubes light bars all that stuff will be launching you know cool. here in the future but the great thing about bronco is they gave you the upfitter switches so there's already wiring up there 
Literally. Oh all, yeah, they're right there. You can see the yeah. switches through the windshield. Yeah, the switches are right there. Just drop them Wiring's right there. right there. It's in multiple places. There's a, a wire up front already, a wire in the glove box, and then there's wiring in the back. So you just tie right into the upfitter switches. Your lights are ready to roll. It, it took me like, I don't know, 10 minutes to wire up a light bar up here with switches already tied into the dash. So really cool stuff and gives you a bunch of versatility for, for adding products onto, onto your Bronco. So now the rear, there's a bumper back here and then a missing spare tire. So you forewent having a spare tire, 37 inch with a beadlock back here right now because it's a yeah, bit of weight. It is. I've had it on there. We tested it. I've been driving around with it. We're way out here on the Rubicon. You it, come down, smack it on a rock. Something. I just didn't want to have any type of situation where we could have possibly hurt the hinges or anything on there. So we'll continue to test it and see, you know, what the factory gate can handle. Did, did it fit with the bumper? It does physically fit on there. Yeah, okay. I, I had it bolted up and on there. RTR already has, which is Vaughn's other company that, you know, they've been building Mustangs and stuff like that forever. They have a bolt on that will actually strengthen up the hinges and everything on there. So it's just, you know, one of those things trying to get here to the Rubicon. But the, I'm super stoked on how the bumper turned out. You know, you can see wraps around the back, protects the tub, helps your departure angle. Um, you know, it's protecting everything up underneath there. It's got some lights so that you can you know tie into your backup lights or put it on the upfitter switch and be able to have light in the back of the truck too. Oh, so. One thing I wanted to touch base on real quick is he's mentioned Fun Haver and RTR. They're 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 completely separate. They're both making stuff for the Bronco, but RTR is typically a dealer type package. You can still order all those parts though on their website. So they have a couple different distribution models: the wheels, tires, appearance packages, and uh, they'll have actually a whole line of like rear bumpers, rock sliders, some of that stuff that you can get at the dealer. My focus focus here is more of you know let's call it the hardcore market we want that's to be what, able so that's what i was going to lead up to to see yeah. if he was going to no. go there the stuff they're, they're doing at fun haver is what we would run on our jeep or what we're you know we'd run on our bronco because yeah. we know it's going to take the abuse that you know we're going to put our bronco through right. <laughs> okay so at the beginning he mentioned a stage one stage two stage three and as a little hint for the other stages to come no, th these are quarter twists. These come right off and these quarter panels literally unbolt like a Corvette. This is not bonded or welded to the tub, which means... Right. No, definitely. I mean, it's going <laughs> to it's gonna be cool. We've we've already got fiberglass fenders that will add a little bit of bolts that like the fender flare will actually kind of be bolted into it. We'll change your wheel well, provide room for a little bit bigger tires. We'll have a long travel kit that will add a, a little bit extra width and more suspension travel. So that's kind of the goal for our stage two kit with right. the long travel fiberglass, it's more suspension so, travel. So you're talking about a wide bodied yeah. Bronco, long travel, dune running, jumping, yep. like Absolutely. the works, yep. which is yep. it's it's, just pretty cool. That's stage two. That's his, Do you want to tell them a little bit about stage three? I or? mean, stage three is going to be, I mean, if you've seen our fun runner, if you've seen the Ranger, you know, it's got race car parts underneath it, fabricated 10 inch axles, um, fabricated front 10 inch narrowed IFS diff. So just kind of start picturing that in your head, coilovers, bypasses, you know, I, I want to do all the crazy hardcore stuff I've been doing in that Ranger and all my other vehicles for all the years. So just be ready uh, for some 40s and some 42s on some <laughs> before too long. Now Sweet. you're talking our language. Right? Well, let's go on the trail and see if this can actually follow the step shot through the river ground. Let's do it, man. So the Rubicon Trail, like Moab, Utah, oh my god, there's a storm coming in, is a really well-known testing or proving grounds for off-roading vehicles. And ironically enough, today is the start of the Jeep Jamboree, which means that we're taking this Bronco through the Rubicon Trail all the way down to Rubicon Springs, which means you guys are about to see a lot of off-roading and exactly what this thing is capable of. Alright guys, I just want you to take a look at the size of some of these rocks that he's climbing up right now, like they're nothing.
as comfort and like stability, how's it feel? That was, I mean, that was easy. The four door, you get such a long wheelbase, like they're really stable. I didn't feel like I was any uncomfort at all there. I mean, did it look at size like you, a, maybe a tire went that high up, okay. but like it was nothing. So the Bronco is obviously IFS or independent front suspension. And what that means is that wheel moves independently of that wheel, which is significantly different than our Jeep right here, which is a solid axle or solid front axle, solid rear and front. But anyways, there's a big difference between independent front suspension and solid axle when it comes to comfort. On an independent front suspension, as each wheel climbs over a rock, when you're going through all these boulders and rocky little boulder fields, each wheel is essentially moving independently of the other. Whereas on a solid front axle, when one wheel goes over, it moves the entire axle, which then shifts a lot of that motion into the cabin of the vehicle. There's a lot less of that when you talk about IFS. You're gonna experience a lot more comfort inside the cab of the vehicle, not just on-road, but off-road than you ever will in a solid axle. Now, with that being said, remember, when it comes to off-roading or honestly cars in general, everything is a give and take. Everything has a pro, everything has a con. A solid axle is gonna be more robust than independent suspension. But again, you get a lot more comfort there. There's always give and takes. That did good. Yeah. That did really good through there. A little pippy on that engine. Uh, yeah, a little. <laughs> So that was another perfect example of the difference between independent front suspension and solid axle articulation. So obviously with a solid axle, you're going to have a lot more usable articulation than you would in independent suspension. Right. And that articulation results to direct traction. Now, if you have front and rear lockers, that's kind of the great equalizer because if you're in an IFS vehicle and yeah, you may pull a tire quite a bit easier than a solid axle vehicle. If you have lockers, that tire that's still on the ground and the other tires are still on the ground, they're all turning, they're all still getting traction. So one being up in the air isn't always the biggest deal. You can see it didn't stop Lauren from being able to conquer the same exact obstacle as the stepchild, our Jeep. But again, where there's a pro, there's a con in terms of diff or belly clearance. As you can see, we've got that giant pumpkin or differential sitting smack dad center of the middle of our Jeep. So you have to be really careful of your center clearance when you're going over rocks, whereas independent front suspension, there's nothing there. You have a lot more center clearance, which can come in handy in the rocks or off-road.
Okay, I'm not gonna lie. When you first told us you're gonna be taking a Ford Bronco through the Rubicon <laughs> Trail during a Jeep Jamboree, I was super excited, obviously for content reasons, right. but also because I was fully expecting to see the Bronco kind of flail a little <laughs> and like bang some stuff and just struggle. It's not. I mean, it's doing awesome so far. I mean, I've been so impressed with this thing the, the whole time and I've been trying to explain that to other people and it's so hard if you haven't driven it And yet. been in it and actually been right. in it on a trail especially because it every time i'm like oh totally gonna pull a tire oh yeah totally gonna smash something it just like doesn't yeah it's doing it's doing awesome um this is literally my first time driving it on 37s with a two inch lift like do you love it so far i love it it's doing amazing I mean, it's doing so good and that's literally like the perfect build yeah. like even most off-road vehicles it's like a couple inches of lift and 37s it's right. like the most universal build you'll see off-road right um, my daughter was driving me in the fun runner Look at o it. overheating on the way up here like this thing drove like, drove like a brand new stock vehicle for 100 miles to get here and then you jump on the trail and you're it is it's the best combination of both worlds so we end up putting 40s on stuff and make it not the best street driver but yeah this is has always been about my favorite combination of you know a small lift 37s super capable with lockers and a sway bar disconnect like that's that's the uh it's it is. it's performing well above my expectations right? i I'm, will i will say that i'm stoked for sure So that is actually Lauren's 15 year old daughter that is driving the Fun Haver Ranger and so far she is also kicking ass on the Rubicon Trail so I gotta give her, I gotta give her a shout out as well. assist to try to pivot up on the top of that rock so for those of you that don't know although we've covered this in a prior video before the trail turn assist is usually you press a button and when you go full lock from one direction or the other with the steering wheel the vehicle will actually automatically engage your abs system depending on which wheel is the inner wheel and it'll lock that to give you a tighter turning radius on the trail that way if you have a switchback or something like that you don't necessarily have to do like a three or four point turn Usually when we film off-roading videos, the red-headed stepchild, our Jeep, is the star of the show. Obviously, it's not in this one. We're not filming her that much, but if you are watching this video to compare Lauren's Bronco to our Jeep, don't. You can't. 
you cannot. This is well over a $100,000 Jeep build at this point. And the only thing on here that is still factory Jeep, other than the body, is the transfer case. Yeah. I guess some electronics, like the radio. But everything else is aftermarket All the and upgraded. Aftermarket, yeah. So definitely not a fair comparison for our red Jeep to the Bronco. But it doesn't even matter on the Rubicon because I've been taking all the same hard lines that I normally take and he's right behind me. I mean, you can only make the Rubicon so hard. With the exception of Old Sluice. Yeah, we're not going to do Old Sluice because it's 6.30 and it's getting late. <laughs> 6.30. Um, also, Soup Bowl, we pulled up and there was a Jeep broken. The tie rod had come out of the, the Pittman arm. But don't worry, when we get our Bronco, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we will definitely test it out in traditional light bright fashion. <laughs> It does go through all it's this. It's just that. cruising it's, it's, through everything. Honestly, ordering mine and then seeing the videos I saw of other people, I was starting to get kind of disappointed that I was getting one. I didn't want to deal with the IFS issues and the new vehicle thing. And, and now after seeing this with just literally a couple modifications and how easily it's cruising through all this, I'm excited again. Our excitement has been <laughs> renewed yeah. in our Bronco purchase.
Perfect. takes is a little bit of finesse and finding the right line but did it so this is the obstacle which is pretty shortly after Buck Island that I'm really interested in seeing the Bronco come through and kind of the Ranger as well because it looks very unsuspecting but it's a lot trickier and a little more technical than you think you definitely have to have the right line and a good spotter for sure Super tight corner, you got this big rock that juts out right here that you essentially have to climb on the driver's side so it leans you into this rock pretty dang well. Slightly larger tires, and you would have just pivoted yeah. right off the sliders. I just didn't want to smoke it. Smoke fender. Yeah.
Uh, if she backs up, it's going to get worse. Yeah. Take out the tail light and everything. Yeah. There's a lot of body to get through this obstacle. Um, so he's gonna front dig and try to pull the front end over. Pull that away. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. you go. That yeah. did it. Alright, back up a little. Yeah. Okay. There this is go. gonna go for it. Woo so Lauren's in the driver's seat now. one that gave her the big vehicle with all the stuff in it. Oh. It's his fault, not her. <laughs> all right, you guys, so we have officially made it to Big Sluice, which means we are almost all the way down to Rubicon Springs. And I've got to say, I am more impressed with the Ford Bronco's performance than I absolutely thought I would be, especially after watching some of the videos that we've seen online, even though we've personally driven in one before, it's still, there's still always that question of, is it going to perform extremely well? And it is yet to not make an obstacle that our Jeep went up so far on the Rubicon Trail. So, <laughs> I mean, kind of speaks for itself. as far away from this you think but that'll just throw you into it you want to be as close to that rock as possible that was perfect now hard that way
Remember when our JL skid sounded like that? The, that stock <laughs> thin skid, just like, like Freddy Krueger nails on a freaking chalkboard. Oh man. All right, you guys. So we finally made it down to Rubicon Springs. Around nine it is very clearly dark outside, but that's kind of our own fault because we didn't get our lazy asses onto the trail until like almost three o'clock. So that's our fault. But it is officially time to set up camp, eat some delicious mountain house meals, and go to sleep. All right, you guys, so as we said, we made it successfully down to Rubicon Springs. And as you can see, the Bronco is still in one beautiful piece. We made, I mean, I say we. <clears throat> Lauren did a fantastic job here of getting it down here with no mechanical failures, no tire issues, no body damage, nothing. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it did awesome. Uh, this was my first time driving it on 37s with the lift. All the body armor did an amazing job. You can see some kisses on the rockers and the bumper. And they that did exactly what they were intended to do. Right, Some Absolutely. black spray paint and, yeah. and, and they're back to new. Touch it back up and do yeah. it, so. There was some spots that I went up that I went up and I'm like, nah, he's not gonna take he's it He's like, Brittany, right get now. out, go film, go <laughs> film him doing this. And he's like, no, I got it. And I was expecting a tire pull, I was expecting you to struggle. And it went up, it went up way easier some things than I, than I thought and I think I, I think this is going to prove people wrong about IFS. No, I mean, I'm I'm stoked. I always compare back to my race truck and people don't understand like how much better it is. And I'm not saying that you're going to build this into a better rock crawler than, than a Jeep. But my race car for an all around what I'm doing all the time, I want IFS. I get into a full hydro or a hydro assist car versus an IFS car and it, it drives terrible. And so, so I, yes, my hydro assist and all that, it, it's slower steering. It's yes, it's powerful, but right. with that power comes the lack with of speed. Every pro, yeah, with there's, every a pro there's a con, every give Absolutely. there's a take. And guys, I want to make a huge point here. This is not about Ford versus Jeep. This is not about Bronco versus Wrangler. This is simply a new off-road vehicle on the market that we get to wheel with and enjoy and modify, and right? And do the same stuff. And yeah, no, absolutely. I, that's what I'm so excited about it. They did really cool stuff, listened to the off-road community on giving us the things we need on lockers and sway bar disconnects and upfitter switches and, you know, making it where you can bolt bigger tires on and bolt a lift kit. Like they, they gave us all that stuff that the off-road right. community wants to modify and be able to do to their vehicle. Right, you know we're getting a Bronco. This isn't like we're getting a Bronco and bye-bye Jeep. No, this is just another horse in the stable. It's Oh, that I was mean, a really bad pun. Yeah. This oh. is literally... <laughs> this, <laughs> it's a Bronco, but I'm... <laughs> this is, no, it really is just another horse in the stable. There's no sellout here. There's no getting rid of Jeep. I love... I, I will not ever get rid of my Jeep. I do want to clarify because we get this comment every once in a while. Guys, Jeep has never and will never pay us. Ford has never and will never pay us. We do not like to work that closely with big manufacturers like that because we personally do not like to be tied down with what vehicle we can drive and what we can or cannot say about the vehicles that we choose to drive. So this, what you just saw is probably about the rawest, most honest wheeling test you could see a Bronco do until we go hit even harder trails. Yeah, no, and I hopefully <laughs> yeah, with I mean, Lauren. We're, we're, yeah, you know me. I'm gonna be out wanting to do the craziest hardest Same with stuff us. we can. Yeah. But but this was the best, the hardest trail I've done in a Bronco yet. You know, it took two inch lift, some 37s, and some body armor to come down and make it into Rubicon Springs. But like, make it nicely and easily. That's no, not yeah. like, was, you could do it. I bet you could do it in a stock Bronco. Is it gonna be more challenging? Is it you oh, gonna yeah. do a little more? Yeah. You know, just like no. any stock rig trying to come but through. But you try coming through here in a stock Rubicon, I guarantee it's same still thing. Gonna be a You're gonna be scraping, hanging up, diffing out, all yeah. the same things. There's a reason that the Rubicon Trail is one of the outside again, outside of Moab, one of the most popular proving grounds for off-roading vehicles because it really shows the nitty-gritty of what these things can do. And honestly, from a YouTube standpoint, I was super like disappointed, disappointed <laughs> honestly that the fact that i got out every time and i was like oh this is gonna be a good one i'm gonna see tire pull and i'm gonna it's gonna be great it's gonna be gnarly it's gonna look like he's about to roll and, and then it then... just crawled right up i was impressed but i was disappointed because obviously you want to see me struggle i do no, want to see we it struggle, we, were like, waiting it for, didn't. we were waiting for that money shot where like the tire's coming up yeah. and he's about to flip and he's got to gas it out and every time he went through everything it was just poised right and was under like, control so you're making it look too easy yeah, Lauren. That's, that's my job <laughs> anyways guys hopefully you guys loved this as much as we enjoyed filming it for you guys as always Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all of your Lightbright Nation merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. And honestly, feel free to let us know what you think about the new Ford Bronco in the comments below. Guys, we love you so much. We will see, see you, you next time. time. Later, guys. Bye. So 
that was another perfect example of the difference between independent front suspension. So that was another perfect example of a difference between independent front suspension. So someone asked us to describe what we do in the simplest terms possible. And I was trying to find uh, an easy way to say that we off-road, like we rock crawl. I came up with, you put big rubber things onto big hard things, thinking like tires, rock crawling on big rocks, right? Because that's what big, I was thinking. Big rubber tires onto yeah. big hard rocks, but big and rubber I, things onto big rocks. I thought about it a little bit longer, and that might not be the best way to describe it.